get, get showing up once in a while. <laughs> Hard to show up when you can't leave the house. Um, these these lessons are just one song at a time these days. We do level one, then level two, then level three. Then we start on when, uh, Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Then on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we repeat the process, level one, level two, level three. So we're tackling a level three song today, which means that it's public domain. The chords are the chords. I don't go through and simplify them in any way. Uh, whatever chords are in it, those are the chords you got to know how to handle. And then uh, we, of course, always then go through with the expectation that you can read tablature and play melody at this point with no problem. Uh, so the real lesson here is making sure that you know your chords and that those are going well for you on your instrument and that we are digging in at level three. Our real goal is to get you playing fingerstyle ukulele finger style guitar sorry i'm still on my ukulele head on i just finished that lesson so we will be playing finger style guitar and i always write out in the tablature the exact way that i think you should play it um, but again it's just a recipe it's not designed to be a rule book and so you will make the necessary modifications to your presentation whatever those happen to be and make sure that you can play it in some reasonable fashion uh, this song is a old song, 1849, if I'm reading that correctly, 1849. So it's a, it's been around a while, and the reason why these songs stick around a while is because they have amazing melodies. These days with modern music, the melody is sort of taking a back seat to things, and uh, we, we are holding on to some of this old-fashioned music that has great melodies. When we're playing fingerstyle we're not singing, right? We're not using our personality to let people know what the song is. We're not, we don't need to have our hair done and our makeup on uh, clearly. <laughs> um, and so we're trying, we need the guitar to do all of the work for us. And we're better off when we have a melody that's actually worth playing. And so a lot of the songs in my book three are older songs or songs that have really beautiful melodies, but maybe are, you haven't ever heard or haven't heard recently. And so that's what's going on on level three. Those of you who are just stopping in, checking it out, um, no, I'm not a pretty girl and no, I can't sing. And that's why we play fingerstyle guitar. Uh, and the program that we are work off of is the denverguitarorchestra.com website. That's got uh, a couple hundred songs on it. Not kind of, well, getting close to a couple hundred songs on there for you to work on in graded levels. So level one is the one chord stuff. Level two is two chord stuff. Level three is however many chords it is. And level four is what probably you're really after in finger style playing, which is full blown guitar arrangements of modern songs. And so, uh, and songs that I like, I don't really care if it's modern or not, it's just songs I like. So, uh, so that's what we're gonna work on. We're gonna play Santa Lucia. Hopefully you've got that sheet worksheet music up in front of you somehow. Um, hey, Bob, good to see you. I loved hearing your songs today. When you're at level three, we should know that you should know how to tune your guitar. You should know how to hold it. And you should know if you're holding it this way that that's not ideal. Okay. We want to get it set up like this. I happen to be using a classical guitar right now, but you it doesn't matter what style of guitar you use in finger style. Uh, metal strings or plastic strings it really doesn't matter. It's really about the techniques that you're going to be using in that particular song. And um, um, I would also, at this level, just be have the expectation that you know how to read tablature. That's, you know, level ones and level two, you're working on it. Level three, I and anticipate we don't need to talk about that. Let's run through our chords, talk about if we were getting this ready to play with a singer, uh, how we would be thinking about what's going to cause us angst and what's going to go well and what's going to go not so well. First chord is a G chord, obviously, not, not a major. Complicated one. Your next chord's D7. In order to get fast at changing chords, you're always chasing your index finger. Get your index finger where it goes and then add on your, the rest of your finger. Okay, I'm going to go to that. When we're sitting on D7, it's real easy to find A minor. It's just you leave your index finger and move your other two, two fingers up there, and then back to G. Okay, so that's what we're working on there. Getting a little bit of buzz because my fingers, I, most of you guys are figured out on guitar, you got wide frets, right? This is a long distance between these two spaces, so it's best if you can get your fingers close up to the bottom, to the fret wire. Um, uh, first page, those are the four chords that you're going to be dealing with. 
second page, same thing, uh, or at least the top of the second page, you've got all those. When we get to measure 18, you're sitting on G chord. We're going to jump over to C chord. Okay. And again, I'm just chasing my index finger to the where, he, where it goes. I'm hanging out on G. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm hanging out on G. And then I'm going to anchor, add, add. Get my C chord. Okay. To get from C back to G, everybody's got to come up, chase your index finger to get split spot. Back to G. Darcy goes then back to A minor. Okay, listen how pretty those chords are. Get over to D7. Okay, and that's it. That's all of the silk chords you have. We've got a three page song here. It's going to take us a little while to work through all of the ways of playing it. And so let's um, talk about your level, the next level, and the next level. And so, what I always like to do. When I'm in class, I always start with the melody because a lot of times people don't know these songs. But here on YouTube, I'm starting just going down the list. Okay, so we're going to sing. The reason I, I want to get my singing over with and done because it's not good. And so we're going to go through, do your chords, make sure that those chords are making sense. Then we'll go back through, play the melody. Then we'll go through and play the tough acts. And then before we wrap up today, we will make sure to, to think about smart musician things that you might do to turn this song into something bigger and better than what's just sitting here on the paper. Okay, so let's get our first chord on. Song is in 3-4. That means every single measure has three beats. So as a chord player, that's what you're really also doing is making sure you're the drummer, right? Making sure you're keeping that nice and steady. Three beats no matter what in every measure. And um, we're going to go ahead and play. Again, please, please know I know that I'm a terrible singer. Now, 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 now. Here we go. Now me with a silvery moon. are glittering, sweet winds and gentle waves, caress my sailboat, full sail with breezes fair, they soothe my wounds and cares, come sail. Notice I don't let this go. I let the guitar ring for a while, and then I pull my hand up from the bridge to slot to get it to stop. I think it's a beautiful melody. I love it. Uh, measure 31. Notice that you have a fermata on the second note. Santa. And I let that ring out for a while. Who knows how long? And then I go. Lucia. Okay, so there's that. Um, also, be aware, uh, when I typed in the lyrics, I didn't quite get everything lined up the way I want that way to really you sing them. So at measure 21, um, it's San, S-A-A, -A, and then uh, Santa Lu, uh, Lu, uh, Lu, is the last two notes should be Lu. And then the, the notes on measure 22 are C, and so it's Santa Lucia. So the lyrics aren't lined up very well against those notes. Um, well, frankly, they're just wrong. And so, so if you were if you're going to go sing this, just know you got to uh, make a minor adjustment on that someday. Eventually, probably in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to repost book three, um, fixing the the. Uh, Typos.
Okay, so that's how the song goes. Those are the chords. If those chords are going well for you, uh, you will be a fine folk musician. You can sing and strum to your heart's delight. Those There's no hard chords in that, really. There's no bar chords, nothing really weird. Um, it just is a beautiful, flowy thing. It really sounds nice on the guitar. Uh, and when I say there's no hard chords, all chords are hard. Everything is hard. Everything in music is hard. Um, but there are no brutal chords uh, waiting for you to ruin your life on that. They're just sort of a good group of chords that you probably by this level should have mastered getting those on and off. If you're still working on that, if you're still trying to get at the proper pacing, remember you don't have to strum every single beat of every single measure. If you have to, if you're reading ahead and when you get your first chord on, it's a G. And you, now you read ahead to see what's coming next, it's a D7. I'm gonna be singing, so all you gotta do is be ready with your D7 when I get there. And if you're fighting any of those chord changes, just don't strum every single, every single beat. Beneath the silvery moon, calm seas are glittering, sweet winds and gentle waves caress my sailboat. So there I'm just strumming once and then getting my chord over to where it needs to be in it by the, so that it's in place and ready to go when I'm on beat one of the next measure. That's where it's going to matter. If you are not to, up to speed yet on your chord and you end up doing beneath the silvery moon by the time you get it on it's already time to change to the next chord and so leave your current chord early enough to be on top of the next chord by the time you get to beat number one of the following measure that's one of the things i think in guitar it's because our chords are pretty challenging on this instrument generally speaking there things are far apart on this instrument and so we end up having to be you know especially you got c chord i mean that's that's a lot of space you got to talk your hand into doing that's a whole bunch of stuff going on there and when you're newer and you, that's a heck of a hard thing to do so leave whatever the chord is prior to that and enough time to be on this and ready to go when it's time to strum it. I think that is one of the things that will make you faster, make you feel better about your music that you're creating is, yeah, you want to strum three beats in every measure, but you may not be there yet. You may not be able to do that yet, and that's okay. Uh, know that, work on it, <laughs> okay? But when you're actually playing along with me or playing along in an ensemble, make sure you're doing two important things leaving the previous chord in time to be on ready on beat one of the next measure and number two don't fall asleep on your current chord because the next chord is going to be the one that kicks your fanny and so you want to always be reading one chord ahead at least right you're looking along through the song going where's my problem going to be and eh, page one i got it. i can pretty much walk through that oh then there's this darn uh, c chord on page two uh, i got to be ready for that and so just be mindful not to fall asleep on your current chord I do it all the time, and it's not ideal because then you're going to mess up. Um, you're going to mess up the flow of the song. This song, especially because we're 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 riding in a gondola going down the canals of Venice, and we want this beautiful rolling, flowing waltz time. Dum dum da 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 dum. Dum 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 da da dum. And so if we're if we're doing Dum dum clunk 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 da da clunk 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 da 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 clunk clunk clunk. You know, it sounds like you're it sounds like you're in Vegas on those canals in uh, the Venetian hotel there, and that's not really where you're after, right? Uh, if you have been to Lake Como in Italy, you know that is the greatest place on earth, and you want your guitar to be uh, in, in that mindset, right? Get get into that George Clooney married to a model living in Lake Como. Uh, that's the mindset you want to get on your guitar. Other things to think about, those of you who are next level players, I give Scalith with this beautiful, this beautiful strum. I don't think you, that there's a better way to do that. However, if you are pulling in, if you are working on this claw pattern, absolutely. Be mindful. This song we're trying to root note probably on all that. So when you're on a G chord, you're on these lower strings. When you're on a D chord, you're on the upper strings. When you're on an A chord, you're on the middle strings. Right? And when you're 
a C chord go on those middle strings? Okay. So, so that's when you're root noting that, try, trying to get your thumb onto the root note of the chord. Um, most of the time it's on these lower three, three strings and um, it'll make you sound good. Um, but again, I'm not positive with this song that that's the best choice to be playing it with a claw. I think playing something really soft and beautiful uh, and flowy is probably a better choice here. Um, Lake Como is pretty cool. Yeah, Lake Como is very cool. Uh, one of the great meals of my lifetime happened on Lake Como. We were sitting on this. More than more information than you need, but basically every single restaurant has these beautiful patios and verandas overlooking the lake, and it could not possibly. And I think they order perfect weather every single day, and you sit there, and they're it's just magical. And um, we were sitting next to this kind of wrought iron gate, and there were spiders all crawling up through that thing, and I couldn't have been happier that I was having dinner with the spiders. Honestly, it was absolutely a miraculous place. Um, so uh, if you haven't been to Lake Como yet, wait till all of this passes and then book a plane trip. It's it's uh, you go into Milan and then you take the train up to uh, Lake Como and uh, I think it's Bergamo is the little town that you go into up there. And um, yeah, you, you you there's a part of you that thinks I, I don't understand why I don't live right here. It's the best place ever. All right, let's play the melody. Again, this level, kind of expect that this is something you can do. Uh, remember, you got ones, twos, and threes. That's your whole first page. So you're going to play in first position through the whole entire piece uh, up until major 17, right? At 17, you've got 7, 5, 3, 2, 0, 5. So I'm going to go with a pinky on 7. That's my highest note, 7. I'm going to use my middle finger on 5. Index finger on 1. Slide it down, 2. Pinky, 5. So when I get to that 7, I'm aware that i got to get that 7 there so that I can get my middle finger on this 5, 3, 2, oh, 5. That's the, that's the fingering I'm thinking makes the most sense. Um, you can obviously think that through and come up with your own ideas, but I think that's going to work for you. Then coming after that other 5, you have 5, 3. I'm probably going to play that in third position. Um, maybe I'll use my middle finger there. 5, 3, you find what works best for your hand. I, there's not a specific rule on that, but we do tend to try to get our, our find out what our high note is, and we tend to put our pinky there. Tend to not always. It might make perfect sense to put your ring finger on that. Seven, five, three, two, oh, five. That is another reasonable choice when you're thinking through your fingering. I would say. There are probably guitar teachers out there that will tell you there's a correct answer to that. I think most of us will agree that you really should be mindfully thinking through what's going to go the smoothest for you, what are you going to be most successful with, and that's your correct fingering. Uh, when you find yourself reaching way far out to catch a note, that's not never going to be recommended, right? And in this case, just getting up here to that seven. It looks like that's the least amount of work, and so that's what I'm going to do, probably. Uh, then the other moment that's a little bit challenging, measure 21, you're going to be at this 7, and then you've got to get all these 3s right after that, and there's all 8th notes running through measure 21. So be ready to go down to C, but don't just grab the first, uh, go down to 3. Don't grab the first 3, grab both of them at the same time. 7, 3, 3, other 3. what we're working on there um, so that uh, again trying to reduce the amount of work that we have to do seven three 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 oh, oh, one five five that's what seems to be the least amount of work then to do there that same exact figure shows up in measure 29 uh, so so just be aware that, that that that's a really slick way to handle that is just cover both threes at once and then you don't have to move anything Okay, let's give it a try from the top. One, two, three.
really nice nice tune that's one of those that you could play with your friends right they play the chords and you play that melody and you would have a really beautiful duet to play with one and to, to go together uh the only thing you'd have to agree on is how long to hold that fermata and measure 31 it's a really really lovely song and i think um just sort of brings you back to to something pure <laughs> okay all right final way to play through this song Oh, by the way, you probably noticed if you were watching rather than just listening, um, I, I, I do a lot of vibrato on a song like that, where it's really supposed to be played kind of slow and beautiful. Um, and again, we've talked about this in other lessons, but all, all, all of your fingers should be able to do it, right? Just, just, just back and forth on the same string. You know, I'm exaggerating to, for effect here, but... And just up and down, parallel to the string. Um, you'll hear it a lot more than your audience will hear it, but I, again, I just think it's one of those things that it, it adds a little bit of oomph to, to the idea of playing beautifully, and I think when you have a long note and you have the ability to give it a little vibrato, it makes it sound prettier. Um, the other thing, those of you guys that are working next level stuff, I played the whole thing with my thumb. Again, not necessarily ideal, but it's it's a way to play it. Um, if you're working next level and working on trying to get your index and middle to cooperate, try to do it every other note, right? I am, I am, I am, I am. And then what you do, you'll find places where you crash doing that because there's a weird string crossing. Go back through and rethink that section and see if you can do, instead of I am, you do am I or something like that. Okay. Um, all right. Let's play the tough acts together. We will um, go play it through one time. And if I find anything that's super weird, like you need, we need to talk about it, then we'll stop and talk about it. But for the most part, this is going to it's going to lay out pretty nicely onto a guitar. Okay, so start with your G chord as always in finger style play, but in this case, instead of your ring finger being on the first string, it's on the second string. Okay, remember, rest strong, it's right there. The thumb is going to rest on the string you're not going to play. Okay, on the top, ready, play. Use your pinky to get this three. Go to your D7, but leave your pinky where it was. And now put your two down. Measure three, get an A minor chord on. Now go back over to the G chord at four, but don't put your ring yet down yet. Now put it down. Take it off. Put it back on. Now guys, this is a ugly looking chord if you don't think it through. It's an A minor chord but then add your pinky on three. You need that pinky to play the melody part of that there. Now switch to a D7. Lose the index. Measure eight, you get your G, open G chord again. Add your ring. Okay, measure nine is gonna repeat the same idea. Seven, all opens. Five, three. This is partial C chord, index and ring, index and middle, and then use your ring finger on two. There's really no other way to get this successfully. Strum it. Open, and then we'll grab five, five, five. Does that sound beautiful? And that's a partial uh, C major chord here. Okay, go back and strum it again. Go back to three, two, three, and a nice G chord. Okay, 
same thing we did before, grab the seven, grab those two threes. Actually hit the open fourth string sounds fine okay this is a weird d7 don't get don't lose your mind index finger middle finger both on the fives and then pinky up here on seven fourth second string it's a beautiful d7 you're going to use it a lot in finger style open hit the two slide up to five slide back to three the other seven. You're already holding the five. Go get it. Open. Okay. Nice, nice two. Okay. Not terribly a hard tough you, but plenty of things to keep yourself busy. Let's go through and play it one time together and then we'll call it an evening. Okay. From the top, one, by the way, Tough Axe is not meant to be an ensemble thing. So if Tough Axe is not going well for you, play one of the other lines. Play the melody line, play the play the chords, whatever. Right? Not, but if you are working on Tough tough Axe, see how you do against me. right? And I'm going to find out how I'm doing against the sheet music. right? And I think the idea here is, is when we play Tough Axe, we start by playing it much slower than we probably will when we go into performance mode. Because we want to really think through all of our fingering choices all of our we want everything to make perfect sense if we hit a bum note we want to know why we hit that bum note and then start problem solving around it so give yourself lots of time when you're playing tough you and generally speaking playing it in time against me is not gonna it's not a great idea right but it's something it's something fun to try let's see how you do one two three
for a second and then go. Letting the guitar ring until it's done, holding my chord, not letting up on that. If you get sick of listening to the guitar, slide it up from the bottom to get it to stop. Whew. That's a good song. That's a good Friday song. Okay, um, just beautiful. Try to get it as flowy and as perfect as you can. Think through your fingering and make sure that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, toss it down a little uh, chat box thing there. If not, um, as always, let me run through the paperwork. Uh, DenverGuitarOrchestra.com. That's where I post everything. Um, if you're on the email list, you should be getting a more or less daily email. I don't think I sent one out to you guys today, but more or less, you should be getting an email most every. Sorry, most every day, uh, letting you know what's going on. Uh, I've got basically uh, level one, then level two, then level three, and then we repeat. And so whatever the next song is after Santa Lucia on the, on the level three songs, that's the one we'll probably do next. Um, and so I'll get all that updated and posted onto the website there before Sunday. We're meeting Sunday through Friday, so Sunday 4.30 and every single day after that, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And... Um, if you are a newer fingerstyle player, obviously level one is where you want to be hanging out. If you've been at this a while, level two and level three are probably introducing skills that are useful to you. Uh, if you're beyond level three, then we talk private lessons and you call, you know, toss me an email. We talk about uh, doing Zoom or whatever. Um, and what I know about this style of play is this is how grown-ups play, right? We don't, we're not going to run into 18-year-old uh, boys wanting to play this on an electric guitar. That's not how we think, right? This is how when you're sitting around at your house and you want to play beautiful music, you get your instrument and you play. And that's what Tough Acts can do for you. And at level four, we get some pretty complex songs, modern songs, songs that you probably want to know. You can read through the list over there on the website of the first 30 songs. I'm working on the, a book for the next 30 songs right now and they're going to be equally beautiful so um bob cool and pretty did okay slow thanks guys you oh bob take care of yourself i will see you next week thanks for being here appreciate the comments and uh keep me informed of what's going on hope you guys have a wonderful day please stay inside we don't want to with the medical workers got enough to do they don't need a bunch of goofy guitar players who needed to go outside to be hanging out with them too so uh stay inside enjoy this time this break i will see all you guys later uh down the road somewhere but don't be shy about sending me an email i am slow about email but i do get to them eventually so have a wonderful night i will see you uh sunday at 5 30. have a great night alan you're welcome thank you sir <laughs> all right ending the stream <laughs>